Welcome to part number six of navigating CRM implementation pitfalls. In the previous video, we talked about vendor selection and how vendor selection issues can cause catastrophes. In this section, we are going to talk about CRM customizations and what to be aware of. If you want to learn more about the research that we conducted, click on the link above and you can find out how we reached all those facts and why we conducted this research. We are going to begin the customization challenges video with simplicity versus complexity. In this video, we are going to have nine sections. Each section is obviously related to insane catastrophes related to customization challenges. When we are talking about complexity versus simplicity, there are few forces that are taking place here. It's not a cold section. You will have management usually trying to force as much features, automations, controls on the employees. And from the other side, the employees want simplicity and they will try to resist and have a very basic system that management cannot really track what the employees are doing cannot really force the employees work in a certain way and the employees will resist. So you have two forces. There is one more side to this equation and this is the vendor. The vendor in most cases will try to eat an home run and have as, as big system as possible so he can get more money for the deal. From the other side, the clients trying to look for simplicity and have as less features as possible. So you have few forces working here. I'm a big fan of starting small, and I gave this, this example many, many times. I prefer to give you an iPhone 4, and you will work with it, understand the features, go to iPhone 5, 6, 7, and when you will be on iPhone, iPhone 15, it won't be that difficult for you to understand the features because you're used to it. I prefer that your employees will get used to a simple system and we grow over time. Usually the architecture that we will create will be an architecture that will define iPhone 15 all the way up and we will build it based on levels slowly. So financially for us, maybe it's not the best deal, but for sure implementation wise, this is the right way to go about it. That will alleviate the pain on the employees. That will also alleviate the pain on management to release money, it's a win-win for the company. The next section will be requirements clarity. Let's assume that the client will ask for an automated lead system. A developer will understand it in a certain way, will execute it as he thinks a great automated lead system should behave and will provide to that customer. The customer will refuse to receive this lead system because it's not answering the needs and then you're going into the 90% of failed CRM implementations. What I prefer to see in those cases is a quality architecture where before the developer even touched the system, both the developer and the client understand exactly how this awesome automated lead system is going to behave. We, for example, on our lead system, it's a 13 pages document plus a Lucy chart that defines all the features that are going to be included, which means once we are on a meeting with the client, we are going to explain each feature and how it's going to work, plus a demo that there is no way in the world that the client can say what I received is not acceptable. It never happened and it will never happen in the future. So if you're working with a developer, demand to have an architecture for your product before it's being built. Therefore, the customization that is going to be applied on your system will be when you will receive it, you will know what you are going to receive. It won't be a vague idea and lots of hopes. Okay, in our business, there, are, there is no place for hope. Okay, this hopium concept is a huge mistake. 
know what you're going to get and also the developer will know what he is going to provide. The next section will be about vendor evaluation. Not every vendor can do everything. As an example, in my company, we have 19 different people. Each person knows different section of the CRM. There are lots and lots of moving parts. You can't have someone that is mastering API integrations and also know how to architect the system and how to create design on Canvas. It, it doesn't exist. You need to have a vendor that understands your needs and is able to produce it. What I prefer to see is when I'm selecting a vendor, I like the vendor to provide me a demo of what he is going to give me. If I will get a demo and I can see with my own eyes what the vendor is going to provide me, I know for sure that the vendor can create what I need. If it's vague ideas and it's all general, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't put my hopes into, into a solution like that. So ask for a live demo and also on the way, make sure that you're not seeing a live system of one of the developer clients because he's breaching the trust of the client, which legally he cannot do. And he will show also your system in the future as one of his demos. So you need to be careful about that. But the bottom line is see a demo. The next section is prototyping and testing. Let's assume that you have a big system. Instead of creating this big system as one cycle, one milestone, I would slice it to multiple milestones. Milestone number one will be a showcase of what you're going to get. It will be a prototype. It won't be amazing. You won't have all the fields. You won't have all the functionality, but you will have a basic version of what you are going to get. In that case, the developer is showing you that he can provide you something on time, on budget, and everything goes per plan. Versus you wait two months and then the story is starting to pile up. I need more time. My dog ate my, my laptop. The developer was sick. All the stories that we got a billion times. Start with a prototype, a proof of concept, run some testing, see that what you've been provided with actually works. And then you will gain more trust and confidence with the developer to proceed to the rest of the development. The next section is budget and timeline management. It's very common based on our research that companies will provide a certain price for the customization, will provide also a related timeline for it and as the project progress, it will be like a salami. You're getting small slices and eventually the developer is giving you a full blown salami. Okay. You're starting with a small price and the price grows, 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 and the timeline grows, grows, grows. And then you are nine months into a development that's supposed to be two weeks. And we saw it many times. There need to be some kind of a budget in place, some kind of milestones in place. And if you see that the development is getting longer and you're not getting what you should get, you are in the 90%. Stop everything, cut your losses and get away from this relationship. Okay. There is, if there is proper architecture, and everybody knows what they're supposed to do. And this architecture is being sliced into milestones. And every milestone will have certain tasks associated with it, which means the development company spend time planning your project. They see you as a serious person and they treat you in a serious and professional way. Then the company, when they created those milestones, they know that they can honor disagreement. There are many cases that developers, they will not spend time into architecture or planning. And they will say, okay, lead system two months, the deal system three months. It's all bullshit. It doesn't work. There need to be a list of every action that is going to take place in every milestone. You are paying lots of money for the customization and you need to make sure that on the other side, the receiving side is also 
doing the same effort for you. You worked very hard for your money and on the other side, someone else is supposed to work very hard for your money. Okay, so make sure that that takes place. The next part will be user involvement. I love the stories that customers giving money to a developer. The developer will tell them, I am working on it. I will deliver in two months. I love it because it doesn't exist. A developer cannot operate without the customer feedback. Even if you take a, an example, like the lead system that we talked about, even that we did over a thousand lead systems in the company lifetime, we still need the customer involvement in every part. We need to understand that the content that is part of the lead system, the automated emails, automated SMS, the follow-up messages, how the employees want to get tracked, and all that's supposed to be with the client. There is no way that the developer can read your mind and know what you want for your team. There is no way, go work two months and come back. There need to be the bare minimum every two weeks one session with the account manager showing you what was done and what is going to happen in the next week you always need to be part of it the developer will come up with roadblocks that they reach that only you as the client can can can, can provide information so the developers can continue on working so the user involvement is a key we prefer to have weekly touch points with the client, weekly meetings, especially with the clients that we are giving them ongoing maintenance and we are basically their Zoe employee. So we take care of their system, usually it's bigger clients. We like to have weekly sessions where we collect all the problems, reporting of what we did and getting new stuff done for the following week. And we have some kind of a plan. User involvement is a key. The next part is documentation and knowledge transfer. How many times someone teached you something, you knew exactly what he was talking about at the same moment, but 10 minutes after, you have no clue what this person teached you or what information he provided. It's a normal thing and it's happening to everyone. In order to combat this problem, we, for example, as a company have one way, other developers have different ways, but you need to make sure that you're okay with whatever solution that you are receiving. As an example, when we are delivering a system, we will create a delivery session that we will show the customer what we did, how we did it, and also how to use what we created. The customer will take the system, will work with it offline, so it will be in test mode that no one no customer will be impacted from it and then coming is coming back for another training session all those sessions are recorded and we provide those videos to the client that they can upload them to their learning system in our case it will be Zoho Learn as an example if this is not working for you request the developer for a different solution there are some customers for example that request us to create some kind of a document that they can have in the repository. It's also doable. In our case, we charge money for it because we're not pricing a solution like that when we are building a system. Most of the cases, it will be those two training sessions. But in your case, you need to feel what's working for you. I always prefer that the documentation will be done internally. So you will have one resource in your company that understand what was provided to them. And it's on the developer to make sure that your resource understand the system and the resource from your company will create a documentation. Therefore, you know for sure that the person who created the documentation understands your system. Okay. In some cases, Companies will ask us to do it and it's also okay, but I always prefer to see an internal resource doing it. The next part will be change management. Change management will mean when you are changing the ownership of the project from the developer company to your company, which means in that case, there need to be proper communication and proper procedures that the information will transfer in a proper way from one management to another. In most cases, this is not taking place. 
In most cases, the company delivers the solution and this is where it ends. But there is no proper way of transferring the information using Zoom sessions or face-to-face -face sessions, but there need to be a proper way to transfer the information. The last point will be scalability. Most of the systems that we see that coming to us from prospects are not scalable, which means I am right now as a developer building you a system. You have right now five employees in your company. Once you have 10, the system is obsolete. You cannot use it. And if you cannot use the system, you need obviously to build a new one. When you are working with the developer, you need to make sure that the developer, while he's architecting your solution, understands that in one day your system will grow. And therefore you need to pro get a solution that is breathing and can grow. One good example will be that when, for example, we are assigning leads, when leads is coming in, we will assign it, for example, to a group. Even though there is one salesperson at a time, we are still assigning the lead to a group and the group will include one person. And then if the clients in the future will have more and more employees or will change this specific employee, the only thing that the, the client needs to do is click on the group and add and remove users. Very, very simple to do. Versus if you have an art coded person as the person that's supposed to be assigned to those new leads, you will need to go to the developer that it will change the script. And that's obviously great for the developer because it's an ongoing forever relationship with you versus you can do it yourself, save money, save time, and you are not going to be the hostage of someone else. This is just one example, but there are many, many other examples out there. If you like this session, thumbs up is always appreciated. It will help us pro promote this video and Google and YouTube will like us more. If you have anything to say, the comments are the right place to do it in the description below. There are some information about our company in case that you inquire about us. Thank you very much for watching this session. We'll see you in the next one.